Hello, my name is Scott Hill with Noble Behavioral Health Services, and I'd like to take today's to talk to you about alcohol. Specifically, how do you know if your drinking has gone too far? Alcoholism has been around pretty much since the ancient people figured out how to turn fruits and grains into liquid. It runs deep throughout human history, yet it is something of a taboo. Our world glorifies and romanticizes the idea that drinking will make you popular, sexy, charismatic, and a life of a party. Alcoholism is a common health and social problem that affects us every day. However, we can't fully realize how prevalent these problems are until we look at the statistics. According to the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, alcohol is the number one drug problem in the United States. Three-fourths of all adults drink alcohol and 6% being classified as alcoholics. Every day, nearly $197 million is spent on alcohol. Nearly 97 million people aged 12 to 20 are reported as being binge drinkers. Every 30 seconds, someone in the United States is killed in an alcohol-related car accident. Additionally, it is reported that approximately 50,000 cases of alcohol overdose occur each year. But what happens when it goes too far? How much is too much? How many blackouts and one night stands and DUIs and paychecks blown does it take for someone to become an alcoholic? The answer lies with you. Here's the deal. No one is going to convince you that you are an alcoholic unless you know it first for yourself that it might be true. The long and short of it is that even if you are asking yourself the question, am I an alcoholic? the chances are pretty good that you might at least have a drinking problem. Many people think it's everyone else, not me. They still don't really believe that they could be an alcoholic. They graduated college, they're holding down a job. Still have a car and a roof over their head. They convince themselves and others that they're not an alcoholic. Side note here, normal people don't have to convince themselves or anyone else that they're not an alcoholic. Still not sure? If you really just don't know if you're an alcoholic or not, or if you've just been binge drinking too much lately and need to cut back, or whatever the situation may be, you can ask yourself two basic questions, and it will pretty much tell you what you need to know. The trick here is, when asking these questions, is it really, is really to take an honest look at yourself? Now, not what you think other people would say, not your parents, not your friends, not your boss, what you think. First question, once you start to drink, can you control when you stop? Second, when you try to stop drinking, you find that you can't stay stopped. You always end up going back, even if you don't really want to. The reason why is more important to be honest with yourself rather than abide by what other people would say is because getting sober has to be for you and no one else. Why do you ask? The answer is that stopping drinking is going to be hard. And if you, want, if you don't have the vindication in your heart that you want to stop but are doing it to please others, then it won't last very long. Still not sure? Let me just point out that if you are still debating this question, there is probably some steep, deeper stuff to look at here. But let's continue on with the questions. Here are some of the more important common experiences and pitfalls that alcoholics go through before deciding to themselves that they might have an issue. Have you started experiencing withdrawal effects? Not just a hangover, but alcohol withdrawal Looks more like shaky hands, severe nausea, sweating, insomnia, and intense headaches. Have you experienced financial distress from your drinking? It can happen really fast. One drink turns into seven or 12. Next thing you know, you're, walk, you're either walking out on your tab, getting thrown out and trying to sign your signature with one eye squinted closed and leaving a $75 tip on a $200 bill. On the other hand, you could be the type of drinker that drinks alone at home, 
spending your money on excessive amounts of beer, wine, or liquor, taking them back to your house. Either way, if the amount of money you spend on alcohol begins to overshadow that which you spend on food, bills, gas, etc., it could be an issue. This is especially true for people with children or others who rely on them for financial support. Do you find your schedule to be consumed around when you will be able to drink? If you have to plan out your entire day, weekend, or vacation around when you will be able to drink how you want, you might be looking at alcohol abuse. Don't get me wrong, normal drinkers definitely look forward to a good happy hour after a long week, but the problem arises when a person shapes their entire day out of planning and getting to drink. For example, if you avoid family events that you know won't, you won't be able to drink at, or if you bail on commitments and appointments because you would rather drink, or are too hungover, or even if you stop hanging out with certain people because they either can't keep up, or you're drinking, or they don't approve of your type of drinking. Have you started drinking at odd times, earlier in the day, or on days when it didn't plan to drink? five o'clock somewhere, right? For most people, drinking is a luxury. Not necessarily. However, a surefire way to distinguish if your drinking is getting out of hand, if you be, have to do it before you can do anything else, or it starts to become an everyday thing. Most people agree that having a nice glass of wine or beer on the weekends is relaxing. But for alcoholics, that occasional weekend glass becomes more and more frequent. Eventually, nothing can be done in a person's life until they've had a drink first, even if it's just a sip or a shot. Have you experienced frequent blackouts? Most people experience a blackout at one time or another in their lives. Blackouts start to happen more often and somewhat become the norm for people when they begin to blackout every time they drink. The feeling of waking up from a blackout is filled with confusion, regret, embarrassment, and remorse. They usually feel like you owe a hundred apologies, but have no idea who to apologize to. So you go back through your text messages and pictures from the last night, hoping to get pieced together what happened. This has become especially dangerous if you are the type who likes to go home with someone else. Blacking out with strangers and not knowing who they are, where you are, or what happened can be terrifying, dangerous to your health, and even dangerous to your life. Have you experienced legal consequences from your drinking? Whether it be a DUI, divorce, drunk in public, or disorderly conduct, the gambit knows no bounds once an alcohol addiction has popped up. Have you experienced relationship struggles as a result of your drinking? If you have found that you are encountering more arguments, tension, and isolation from your family and friends after you have been drinking a little more, have you asked yourself if maybe it might be your drinking? Have these fights been due to any of the above mentioned characteristics of a drinker? Has your romantic partner lost trust in you? Have your parents been disappointed? Have your friends been hurt? Have you started to cut yourself off from the loved ones to spend more time with the only one who really understands you, alcohol? Or have you found that you can't stand to be around your loved ones unless you've had a few? If you can answer yes to any of or several of these questions listed above, even if your situation varies just a little bit, it might be time to take a look at your drinking and decide for yourself. Once again, my name is Scott Hill with Noble Behavioral Health Choices. If you need assistance, you can reach out to us in Caldwell or the Mental Health and Recovery Services Board here in Zanesville.